All right, thank you two both so much for being here with me today. We are celebrating 25 years of Tomb Raider all through uh, throughout 2021. So I have Shelly Blonde and Natalie Cook here with me. This is Lara's original voice and Lara's original model. This is so exciting. And you two actually haven't met before. So this is extra exciting. This is the first time I've, I've, uh, I've seen Natalie. And uh, yeah. yeah, this is, this is incredible. Yeah, lovely. Wonderful. Okay, so this is super interesting because, you know, as, as the series evolved, we had people that would be like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm trying out to be Lara Croft or I'm going to this audition and that like had this weight and this sort of gravity to it. But when both of you guys auditioned and then got the roles for Lara, Lara wasn't a thing yet. She was just this, this name, this computer character. So that's what we feel like is really interesting in the story that you two have. So to kind of set the scene, um, Let's start with where you guys were at career-wise at the time. So we'll start with you, Shelley. What were you doing at the time that you got the job uh, to be Laura? At the time, I was in West End musicals. That was my thing at the time. I was always an actress before, um, mostly musicals as well as some commercials and things. But it was majorly, ma ma mainly um, stage work. So I was doing um, a show called Only the Lonely, a Roy Orbison musical. And um, an agent happened to come and see, a voiceover agent happened to come and see the show. And in the show, I was doing lots of different accents. And it was a fluke that they came backstage afterwards to ask me if I had representation for voiceover work. I didn't, I'd never done okay. voiceover work before. And they wanted to take me on. And um, so really, you know, I'm from an acting background, all singing, all dancing. And that's how I got into voiceovers. Um, wow, I think my second, my second job was, was Lara. Awesome, okay. And then how about for you, Natalie? What were you up to at the time, professionally? Um, I was doing um, a bit of modelling, you know, here and there, TV work as well, um, doing quite a few different sort of bit parts on different TV shows. Um, and I was also modelling for um, Snow White for Disney. So at that time, the Disney was opening all stores up uh, all across the country. So I was Snow White um, going around and opening a few stores up, but also um, doing the celebration, I think it was 25 years uh, of, of, of the video or something, or it was a release of the video of Snow White. Okay. And, uh, and so I was promoting that at the time. That's um, amazing. Okay. So you went from Snow White to Lara Croft. So I was like, Snow White quite a bit to different, <laughs> but <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So how did you hear about the job then, Natalie? So, so Shelley, you heard about it during the, the they, they approached you after a show, but Natalie, how did you avert, uh, at first hear about this job? Well, it was my agency and they called me and they said, you know, we've got this job that's come up. They've, they've seen your photos and um, and they, they'd really like you to go for the casting. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, the only thing is, is that obviously you've got um, blue eyes and Lara, the Lara Croft, this uh, this computer character that they want you to, to portray, has brown eyes. They said, but obviously, as you were doing Snow White, I had to wear brown eyes for that as well. Oh, brown okay. contact lenses. So they said, if you can pop the brown contact lenses in and just give it a go and see see what happens and uh, and, and so I did and uh, and yeah I got the job which was amazing that is amazing so, so those Shelley, brown contact lenses come in handy for sure for <laughs> sure so Shelly how was the character described to you in terms of like characteristics did they compare her to anybody in pop culture because again Laura didn't really mean anything at that time people didn't know who no. she was no uh Nobody knew anything about her. Um, well, she was, you know, a female Indiana Jones. I was told, you know, I remember them saying Indiana Jones. Um, and also they, they kept saying um, a female Bond, a female Sean Connery. And, you know, it's 25 years ago. That's all I can really remember them <laughs> saying. I saw a sketch of her was faxed to me. Um, so I could kind of, you know, get a little feel of what she was about. but. Nothing really for the audition, for, uh, nothing really. I just had to read the lines how I felt she would sound. Okay, and then how about for you, Natalie? Did they describe her in a particular way or was did you also get that, bo that bond, pretty, sort of Indiana Jones? Yeah, pretty similar to, uh, to Shelley's. Uh, they mm -hmm. said that uh, she needed to be a Indiana, female Indiana Jones, okay. a kick-ass character that took no shit from anyone. I love that. And um, who, <laughs> yeah, which I was like, whoa, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Because back then, obviously, you know, there was no female computer characters for a start, and um, and it was quite a, a male-dominated world at that particular time. But I remember the Spice Girls being huge then as well. Yeah, so it was all about girl power. For so, sure. Which was really brilliant. For sure. Yeah. A lot of people actually don't realize this, but the Spice Girls in the Spice World movie, because I owned it and I owned the Spice Girls video game because they were great. 
You can actually see Tomb Raider being played in their tour bus. They have they have oh, really? being played. Oh, and I, oh, I just oh, freaked out when I saw that. I thought that was yeah. so cool because that synergy, you know, they both they wow. both helped create that girl power movement. It was so great. Yeah. So yeah. what was the audition process like for each of you? Shelly, you can start. Um, was was it after that that they met you at the show? Was that like it? They were like, we're sold. No, 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 no. Did you they, go through it? They didn't meet me. They didn't meet me at the okay. show. An agency booked agency, me at okay. the show. So they took me on. And then a few weeks later, they said, listen, we've had a request. Um, we'd like to you to audition for this part of this Lara Croft. Um, we're faxing over a picture. Just, you know, take, take the lines that they send you. So literally I had my, you know, I pressed play and record into my little cassette player. And I, I read some of the lines, welcome to my home. And um, sent it off via post, obviously, uh, back then. And um, a few days later, maybe a week later, uh, they asked to do a conference call. Um, so it was with IDOS and CORE. And they then again asked me in this conference call to say more lines, mm -hmm. um, which I did. And then they told me, I can't remember if it was the same day, but after the course, pretty soon after the call, that I'd got the gig. And it was amazing for me because they'd been looking for her for so long. Yeah, it was like you know, six months, six months mm -hmm. trying out many, many voiceover artists. And I, it was just, it was thrilling to, to get a job. Obviously, I didn't know what it would entail and that she'd be around 25 years later, but it was yeah. thrilling to get the job. That's amazing. And how about for you? What was that? What was that process like, Natalie? Did you have to do anything uh, physical, like any sorts of like? I know stunts probably would have been a little extreme, but but how do you embody her and show that? Yeah, well, I went to the casting. Um, when I arrived, there was loads of models there. Um, and I did think to myself, oh, I'm not getting this job. You know, there there, there were so many that fitted the bill. Um, but I remember sitting around, like Shelley said, it's 25 years ago, so I'm sort of having to try and remember these things. But mm. I went into uh, into this room, and all I remember, there was quite a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they were just asking me a little bit about what I did and what, what I was doing at that particular time. And... Um, yeah, they just said, do you think that you can play this character? Do you think what you've got what it takes, you know, to to, to portray someone that is takes no shit from no one? And I said, well, I'm, I, I don't know, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Well, <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, so yeah, so that that was the process. And uh, and I came away from there actually feeling feeling a little bit sort of happy thinking, actually, I don't know, I'm, I might have got I might get this. Yeah. And uh, and then my agent called and said, yeah, you've got the job. Um, so, yeah, I was really happy. But at that particular time, they, they were trying to look for three models okay. um, to, to do the, I think it was the Expo show in London. So mm -hmm. that was where they were going to launch the, the video game. So they were looking for three models. So I was one of three, um, uh, which the other one was Katie Price, who I did it with, and another model from a, a different agency. Uh, so three of us were chosen, but then... Luckily, I, I got picked uh, picked to, to carry on portraying yeah. her, which was amazing. amazing. I Brilliant. have seen some of the photos from that expo, and they are amazing. If you happen to know where any other ones are, you can dig them up. They are they are just like a treat to see, especially the really <laughs> young dev team. You see them, and they're just like you can you can tell that they're at the, at the start of this incredible journey with this thing that they've created, and it's just really neat to see. Shelly, we're going to talk just about uh, about your career for a bit, and then Natalie will come back to you and yeah, okay. talk specifically about yours. But so, Shelly, you okay. were saying that the this ended a six month search for Lara. So, um, one of the interesting things that I remember is that you know obviously she started as Lara Cruz, and Toby Gard had this quote about how they wanted to move her to La become Lara Croft and make her you know this quintessentially as British as possible. So, for people in the U.S., like what does that mean? What is quintessentially British, and how did you bring that to the character? Well, you know, I, I, that always confused me because I don't think she was quintessentially British. You know, okay. I, um, she was she was quintessentially very posh. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she was she was you know from private school. She had a, lived in a big mansion. She had a butler. I mean, I don't know many British people like that. But um, so so I, I would just I would say posh rather than posh, quintessentially okay. British. But she had a great education and yeah, um, I. I think yeah, that's I one of the interesting I things about I her, say though, that is I was at all. the poshness huh? and then the fact that like, she likes to play in the dirt and run around with, like, you know, skeletons yeah. and dinosaurs and stuff. I think that's the, the interesting dichotomy of, like, the poshness with her yeah. character, for sure. Yes. And how did She's you... much more adventurous than me. I, 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 there's no adventure in me, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have said. But I, I, love, I love that, that she's from this very proper background, but yet, you she know, gets in there. And... No, okay. Yeah. 
So how did you approach the role of Lara? You mentioned when, when I talked to you uh, uh, for the book, both of you I talked to you guys for the book, um, you mentioned being told to do very monosyllabic sort of talking. And, and you're a very bright, bubbly person, obviously. So was yes, that I difficult am. for you? And <laughs> what did that conveyed? Very difficult. Um, I, I, I almost felt like I was being, you know, held back in chains because, um, you know, I, I mean, she's sexy, but I wanted to make her, you know, I thought she was, you know, really sexy and confident and, and I wanted to really portray that, but they wanted to keep her very, very monosyllabic, very, very, very safe, I felt. Um, so every time I'd go for it, you know, um, they'd say, pull it back, pull it back. Oh, <laughs> so I had to keep, had to keep going back. But, you know, a voiceover artist's job is to do what they, you know, it's their baby, it's not my baby. Yeah. So I have to do, I have to, you know, give them the voice that they want for the character, not, not what I want. Mm -hmm. So um, even though I would have added more oomph and personality, I don't feel she had much personality. I would have, um, I would have done that. I've got to deliver what they want. And, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, that, that's, that's the job. And so what was your impression for why they gave you that direction? Was it that she is like a straight shooter and just to the point and not distracted? Absolutely. Okay. Right. No mucking about. She's got she's got no time for anything, you know, fluffy and fancy. She wants to get straight to the point. She's she shoots from the hip, you know, in and out. I also think uh, that, that she spends that. a lot of time alone and like with yeah, she's alone creatures. Now. So like yeah. maybe her conversation skills were just yeah. sort of developed yeah, at that time. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, it also, so I remember you saying it only took five hours of recording. So 25 years later, we are sitting here talking to you about five hours of recording for this character. That's pretty incredible. So, um, yeah. like, what was that session like? Who was there and how much guidance did they give you while you were there? I, I know that there, there would have been about four or five people there, as well as an engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can only remember Nathan. Um, okay. Nathan McCree, uh, yeah. who, who wrote the beautiful, beautiful music to it. Um, and they he was he was saying a lot actually he was giving a lot of direction but again it was always um you know they'd, they'd ask me which line to say and then they'd say pull it back or do a bit more or or, or a bit more sarcastic or uh, you know now do it like she's hurt or you know now she feels bad for him or something <laughs> um but but it was it was it was a continuous um bring it back bring it back bring it back um mm -hmm. but i had to have in mind the whole time monosyllabic you know just deliver it deliver yeah. it until you get to the end so you, you mentioned that like the, the the more vocal intensive bits and this is interesting because i do for the studio i do temporary vo for lara a lot of times as we're trying to work through Fantastic. The and so like at first i started very timid and like eventually i started kind of trying to do like the actual um you know like the the more exertion sounds is that what you guys call them yeah yes, yes. they are very intense on your throat so you had to save them for the end at these sessions and, yes and if this was your whenever first whenever i when Whenever I do that sort of sort of a thing, I always say, "Can we leave this to the end?" Normally, they'll say, "We're going to do that at the end because we know that's the hardest bit." Um, so you know, you know, you get all the soft stuff out the way, but then sitting there, majority of the time was, you know, <laughs> you know, and it's very taxing, and you know, having to go, no, 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 you know, four hundred times, um, and. You know, it's, it's a little bit embarrassing as well in a room full of men when you're going, ah, ah, <laughs> ah, ah. you know, that's, you know, so it's a bit like, you know, and they can see you because you're always behind a glass screen and you're, ah, yeah. ah, you know. So, I mean, this was your first voiceover role, right? So like, uh, it, was my, it was my second, oh, yes. Second one. So, I, so yeah. these sorts of things were kind of foreign to you, I would assume, like someone yeah. giving you direction, like you're falling off a cliff, you're being slammed yeah. into the wall, you're drowning. Like that was all. Yeah. Kind of yes. come with it on, but then, on the fly. But then, but then again, that's when the acting comes into it. So, you know, voice acting is acting. Absolutely. So you just have to imagine that you're falling down and, you know, and they might say it's a higher cliff now. So, you know, <laughs> an even longer sound or, you know, but it was, it was good fun. It was exhausting, but yeah. it was good fun. I can imagine. So what was your favorite line to deliver from the game? And are there anything that you remember? Fans were wondering if there's anything that you remember recording that actually didn't make it in the game. I can't remember what I recorded last week, so <laughs> asking totally 25 fair. years ago totally. is difficult. But you know, I know, people always get me to say, you know, welcome to my home, yeah. or um, I think I'd better get out of these wet clothes now. Yeah. And a lot of them just say, can you just say no into my phone? So a lot of the time, I'm just going no, it's no. A big, it's a big no. mood, as they say now on the internet. Like, yeah. No, that yeah. like my husband, no, you know, no. he's it all the time. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, so you also participated in some interviews and commercials as Laura afterwards, correct? And what I, can you talk a little bit more about those, what they had you do? 
Um, I can't remember. <laughs> I, I really, I really can't remember. I would have just gone in and uh, and uh, with the voice, just, 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 um, just done what they've what they've said to do. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever the script said, I would do. I, I honestly, maybe I can't I'll remember. see if I can dig through the archives and find some of them. And I would maybe, love that. Maybe, maybe we'll see what we can come up with. Oh, I and, love that. So, do you think that people recognized your voice as Laura, or was it too different from your speaking voice that like people didn't know? You know, it's different with you, Natalie. Obviously, like people can see your face and see you. Uh, in the character because you're you're there physically, but Shelley, did people know until unless you told them? No, because also because many of the people I worked with or knew weren't gamers, okay. so it's not a thing that they would go, oh, I'm not the voice of Lara Croft. It wasn't until um, maybe two years later that I was doing some filming in New York, and all the uh, you know the grips and the the director and you know all the people in in the crew. Um, were suddenly like, I, 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 I recognize your voice. Maybe just because you're British and, you know, we hear Brits in films all the time. And um, is, is, have you been in anything we'd know? And I said, oh, well, I don't know. I did a game called Tomb Raider, you know. Oh my God! <laughs> you know, and then they go, do this, do that, see this, see that. That's you know, amazing. They couldn't, they couldn't believe it. You know, that, that's the only time that people have, you know, I thought, oh, wow. That's awesome. So you were asked back for the second Tomb Raider, correct? But you were like so yes. busy at that time and weren't able to do it. You see, that was, I, I'm very, very blessed in my career that, that um, you know, I, I, I left acting behind, which is a good thing because I'd lost my passion for it. And I feel okay. like when you lose your passion, you should move on. Yeah. But I've never lost my passion for, for voiceovers. So from when I started uh, voiceover, uh, being a voiceover artist, the work came in thick and fast and you know you get contracted i was contracted to disney to blockbuster video and pretty pretty soon yeah. and um I had, a, I had a very long career with disney and well 20 odd years and and blockbuster video and once you're contracted you can't you can't make the dates work mm -hmm. or it's it's much more difficult yeah. and they needed to do it in a in a specific you know a, a specific time which i just couldn't do so i gave my permission to use my voice on two and three, so they used all my sound bites, yeah. you know, for from the first game on the second and third. Awesome. And yeah. I remember you, you told me this, which was pretty incredible, that you found out that someone was working on the Tomb Raider movie with Angelina Jolie and, and found out that she actually listened to your voice to get yes. inspiration and to work on her own accent. How unreal was that to find out? Honestly, that was, <laughs> that was a gobsmacking moment that she, she might know my name, but she definitely knows my voice. You know, it's like, Angelina Jolie, and I love her. So I was, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll take that. That's amazing, awesome. That's, that's, a, that's a, like a, the cherry on top of an already amazing experience. Oh yeah, like. come on. Get that. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that in, in the clip without any context, all right, Shelly? <laughs> okay, on to Natalie, so. What was your costume originally comprised of and how did it differ from future models? One of the things I loved is that like in some of the early pictures you had like little braided pigtails, which was super cute. Like, did you have some ownership yeah. over the costume and how it came to be? Well, no, that was just my hair and I uh, I do get quite jealous actually for with all the other models having such amazing sexy outfits because mine was pretty naff to be honest with you. <laughs> like being the first model was like a pair of um, I think they, I don't know, I think they got a lot of the uh, the uniform second hand. Mm -hmm. Well, not the uniform, the the outfit. Yeah. Um, the shorts were like ex-army shorts and uh, the, the holster was, um, was, was very old. The t-shirt was um, just a, a cotton top. Nothing like the next model, Rona Mitra's outfit, who had a lovely latex, sexy top and nice tight shorts. Everything was like made to measure. Um, but yeah, I was pretty envious, actually. I, I guess that's the that's the trade-off for being the first, is that they're kind of exactly. figuring out things as they go. But yeah, they eventually went on to do those like really heavy new rock boots, which I heard were actually pretty challenging to move around in, and the latex yeah. tops and all of that. I will say yours was probably more comfortable. I think it was very cute. But I can understand yeah. like there is yeah, you know, a little bit of a Yeah, quite sweaty, but... <laughs> so how did you feel in it, though? Like, was this one of the first times that you had done something modeling that was a bit more a character that was a bit more like physically powerful and confident like that and, and maybe even a little yeah. bit aggressive what, what did it make you feel totally like different like yeah totally different to obviously snow white it was like one extreme to the other really yeah <laughs> yeah um, but you no, know, yeah, it was amazing to to play a character that was like all about girl power and 
you know, um, didn't take no shit from no one. Yeah, I really did enjoy playing the character. You know, I was told that I had to act a certain way and and, uh, and I definitely did. <laughs> I'm curious, actually. So we, we hear all the time about how, you know, many of like the, the young men and gamers and stuff like loved seeing Laura at the conventions and got mm -hmm. so excited. At that point yet, had you had many like young women or girls come up to you and get excited about the character or did that come a little bit later? Because like yes, for me, I saw amazing. Laura and was just like, I fell in love with yeah. her and yeah, okay, yeah. So later. Yeah, there wasn't, um, I can't recall any female fans actually when I first started doing it. Uh, about five years ago, uh, the 20th anniversary, yeah. I went to Manchester, the, uh, the cosplay yeah. there. And um, there was a lot more female fans uh, coming up, probably equal to the, to the men. A lot of the girls coming up dressed, dressed in her outfit, and, which was really lovely to see. It is. Um, yeah. And I actually love that now, like there's actually a lot of male cosplayers who cosplay as their versions of Lara too, which is just wonderful because it's yeah. like, they're embracing, they're embracing exactly. the love for the character and being empowered by her, you know, no matter what gender yeah. they are. So that's wonderful. So your yeah. first job was at the European Computer Trade Show, you said in 1996. So um, what did they have you do? Like people didn't know who Lara was. So were you speaking to them and telling them about the game or was it primarily just posing for photos and stuff at that time? Maybe posing for photos. They just wanted us to run around, pretend to shoot people, <laughs> um, act really moody. Um, like we were pretty untouchable in a way, you know, okay. you come in and I'm going to shoot you dead sort of thing. Um, so yeah, uh, but we did have a lot of people that come up and said, you know, who are you? What, what are you doing? And, you know, so we explained a little bit as much as what we were told the character that we had to play okay. um yeah so uh so, so yeah that was about it a bit like Shelley 25 years ago I can't can't quite remember too much about yeah. it but I do remember we had a lot of fun that's in, so that's interesting you were you were allowed to speak as Lara then or so on because the, the later models until I think legend actually were not allowed to speak as Lara and if they ever had opportunities like the voice actress would actually like be behind stage speaking wow. or something like they wow. they actually were not they were told to not speak as Lara because they didn't want that disconnect between the voice actress exactly. and the model yeah so that wasn't an issue yet again they were kind of figuring out how how things exactly would work. Okay. yeah not back then I wasn't told that I wasn't allowed to to speak but yeah. uh yeah if I did it was very blunt short short answers you embody know. her I love that I think a lot of, at the time a lot of guys were a little bit scared they yeah. were like who is this character like running around with guns in in a holster sort of thing yeah you know I mean it, it, it would be allowed now you know to, to walk around with with guns and and whatnot and I think a lot of the, the male fans were really interested in in the guns um <laughs> A as lot well. of cosplay. I'm, not, I'm not sure it was the guns. I'm not sure it was the guns. <laughs> I'm gonna put that out there. Cosplayers have gotten creative over the years as the uh, restrictions on like props and stuff at conventions get a little bit more tight. So they'll either print out like cardboard versions that look low poly, kind of like the original. Or I've actually seen Alara walking around with bananas, which I think is kind of funny. Just like two bananas in her holsters. And it's like, well, <laughs> run, wow. run with the rules. Like you're <laughs> adhering to the rules. That's fine. Like they're a little less intimidating, but pretty funny. So yeah. So after, so you said that after this initial gig, you ended up doing more of the, the face of Lara stuff is kind of like the, the, the premier model there. So what kind of stuff did you do? I think you said store openings and launch parties yeah, and all that. Um, that's it. Yeah. Mainly um, the game store, which is quite a big um, chain of, of gaming uh, stores around the UK. Um, the Virgin stores were quite big then. HMV, I used to go around oh, and yes. you know, promote the game. Do you remember? Yeah. And promote the game and they they get me to play against, you know, the fans, which I was really useless at, which uh, <laughs> didn't go down too well, but <laughs> I'm not techno at all. Um, yeah, so that was sort of thing. And photo shoots. And I did do a commercial as well, which was amazing fun um they had a um an expert uh in arms that taught me how to use a real gun because i had to fire real guns um uh, yeah it was all a little bit scary actually and daunting um but uh, yeah so that was great and they also got someone in to be my stunt double that could do backflips and all things like that and it was a commercial that they used in the cinemas before films and everything so that was, uh, I remember going to the cinema, I can't remember what I was watching, and then my commercial came on. So that was, that, that was amazing. amazing. That has yeah. been so cool. I can't, yeah. I don't think that we have that in our archives. It is like my mission oh, to try to find it, uh, unless you have. Well, do you know Ash? I do. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm like, sure ask, he's ask him for it. Like, I, I feel like I've seen it, but we don't have it on our channels. But definitely, I'll need to find it so that people can see it because I remember it being super cool. Like, that oh, the, wow. the movie was a, a really awesome yeah. early commercial for Laura. Um, and then you also had this amazing story about how you almost got your dad in trouble because oh, yes. he had your costume in his car. You yeah, want well, to talk to that? Like yeah, I phoned my parents up. I just, um, I'd just done a job um, promoting Lara Croft, and I said, "Oh, would you pick me up from the station?" And they said, "Yeah, we're not far away. We'll come and grab you." So they picked me up and got to the traffic lights. And my dad said, "Natalie, let me have a look at the, the guns that you use." So I went, "Oh, okay." Got it out, and he's looking at it, you know, observing it all. And he's like, "Oh my God, they're so realistic." Put it back, and um, they dropped me home. Must have been about two hours later, there's a knock at the door. Uh, open the door, and my parents are standing there with five police. And <gasps> they said, we need to come in and, and search your property. And my dad said, they're looking for your guns, your Lara Croft <laughs> guns. And I was like, what the hell has gone on? And, uh, and apparently, they, they, were, they were looking all over the house because they didn't believe my dad. He tried to explain the story that, hang on a minute, my daughter is is a character called Lara Croft. Well, back then they were like, "Who's, exactly. who's Lara Croft? Like, yes. <laughs> who is, what are you on about?" So, um, in the end, I got the guns. I showed them. They had to radio through to this special branch. And apparently, what happened is my dad fitted a description of a wanted man, and oh. um, a bus driver. Uh, sorry, I forgot to say this bit. A bus driver, when my dad was looking at my guns in at the traffic lights, the bus driver had seen my dad looking at this gun and reported it straight to the police. Amazing. And when my parents arrived at their home, they saw these cars parked outside and didn't think anything of it. And then the next thing, they were going to smash the door down, basically. Oh and it was absolutely terrifying for my parents. Oh they had to God. put their arms up. They're like, arms up, don't move. They ransacked my parents' house. Wow. And then they took, took. Um, they had to be police escorted to my house. And, um, and yeah, found, uh, gave them the guns. And, uh, and then they said, okay, everything's fine. You know, we know that they're, they're not real and we're sorry. You know, I do think that they deserved a bit more than a sorry because it was, <laughs> I mean, my dad nearly had a heart attack. Oh, him. my goodness. But, um, yeah, but yeah. But looking back now, it was it was a really you know funny funny story to tell. Again, that was <laughs> the point. That I said, don't I know what the police say. I don't well, tell I their story. Like when they I tell friends, you know, we try to arrest Lara Croft. <laughs> I love that. So that's obviously like a pretty bizarre or memorable moment. But what about with a fan? I feel like you told me at one point that a fan proposed to you. Is this true? Yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, it was a regular occurrence, actually. Most of these different things, they're like, oh my goodness, will you marry me? And yeah, I did, I did get quite a lot of, uh, a lot of marriage proposals, which was sweet. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So they proposed to Lara or did they propose yes. to you? Well, I think it's Lara. Both. I'd like yeah. to think it's Lara. <laughs> It weird, <laughs> I just, I love that. I love that the fans would actually like, obviously, address you as Lara, like you are Lara, oh, brought to life I and proposed know, to Lara, this so, fictional character. Yeah, that's what was so lovely about playing the part is to see the fans' faces, like they yeah. were like oh, in absolute awe. Yeah, and I when mean, they actually see you in person, they really do think that Lara Croft is real. You that's know, a testament yeah. to you embodying her, obviously. But yeah, I mean, like fans still to this day really love that we don't have official models anymore, but we hire cosplayers because there is that mm. moment that you love mm. just seeing oh, Lara brought to life. And it's yeah. it's just such a good feeling as a fan to see somebody embody Lara that way. So totally get it. I love that. Mm. Um, and this is actually one that very few people know about. So Cor had you or Idos had you record a song called Raider. So what was the experience? Yes. What was that? Had you done? music or singing before was that just a, at their request no I, I I yeah I loved singing okay. um and um I've always enjoyed singing and I think they asked me once I can't remember I'm sure they must have they must have said to me can you sing and we're interested in Lara bringing out a record. So I went for a meeting um, with uh, with a guy who used to be in a, a band called Curiosity Killed the Cat I think it was oh. Kim Love Do you remember them? Yeah. So um, him and oh, about three or four others, and they said, "Yep, yeah, you know, we want to we want to do this song." They got a writer in, wrote the lyrics, and and that was it. And the next thing I knew, I was in a recording studio. Um, wow. 
So yeah, it was it was great. But there was one bit in it where I had to say my name is Lara, mm-hmm. and I it was more something that you would have probably have had to say because you obviously were her voice. But yeah, um, yeah it was uh, it, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I mean. I, I didn't uh, actually want to stop being Lara Croft. It was such a great job. Oh, um, and so I was a little bit envious of all the other models because um, she's just got oh. better and better each time, really. Yeah. yeah. So what happened with the song? Why didn't they release it? Like, originally, you had a recording of it, right? Do you know why it didn't end up making it public? Do you know what? I don't know. Because it was a really good song. Yeah. And I don't know if I say so myself. And I think it was great. <laughs> and I, uh, I don't honestly know why they didn't, they didn't use it. I'm, yeah, I, so I'll yeah. link to it. I'll make sure the people watching have a chance to listen to it because it is great. Oh, I'd and love it, to hear that. I, I feel like this was like right at the start where they were starting to realize that Laura was going to become a pop culture sort of icon. And so they're like, exactly. pop culture, pop music, let's do this. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll make sure it gets its time in the light. If it's <laughs> online, we'll link to it. I think Ash has got it online. So we'll, we'll make sure that people get to, to listen oh. to it and enjoy it. So last question specifically for you. You suited up again as Laura for the 20th anniversary. What was that like at a convention in the oh. UK? What was that like? Was that just bizarre, it, fulfilling? It, no, it was lovely. I felt really privileged to A, be asked. You know, I was. I did sort of think, why, why me and not all the other models? Because there has been so many other models. And... Um, so yeah, I did it and to, to meet so many fans and especially there was this one family, the uh, the husband and the wife had been fans of Lara Croft for years and years and years and they had their two children with them, two little girls, and they were dressed as Lara too and Amazing. it was like, oh my goodness, that it's been carried down by, you know, the next generation now and it's yeah. so lovely to see and yeah, it was it was really lovely. It did feel a little bit strange, actually, you know, being in my forties, putting the outfit back on, and <laughs> managing to squeeze back into the shorts. But um, yeah, it was uh, it was lovely. It was great. It was a really lovely thing to do and to be asked to do as well. I have heard nothing but good things about it. People said that it was lovely to meet you, and they had such a great time. And I think oh. it was a wonderful way to to celebrate. So that's awesome. So well, I've got a couple questions about the legacy then. So uh, for both of you, were, uh, were you inspired at all by your time as Lara Croft? And, and did any part of her persona or so on kind of influence you or the experience? Or is there something that kind of resonates with you still to this day? We'll start with you, Shelley. I- I'm going to say at the time, no. Mm-hmm. At the time, yeah. I'll be honest, it was just a gig. Totally. You know, I went, I, I, you know, you do a gig and you forget about it, you know, the next day. So I forgot about it totally until a year later when I, you know, con- I saw her on the front cover of magazines and, you know, she, it was on sale in the shop. I, I mean, I totally for- forgot about it. And not being a gamer, it just wasn't part of my mm-hmm. my makeup, my, my life. So I didn't realise until I joined Twitter, I'm going to say five years ago, um, <laughs> I didn't realise how big it, big it still was. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's, that's been amazing to me, how much of a global icon she is and how the franchise has continued and how it has all ages, the people that originally started playing the games, and little kids playing the games. I have a girl called Emily, I think she's seven or eight, yeah. seven, I think. And she comes to comic cons and she comes to concerts oh, and she that. comes to interviews. And she's obsessed with Laura. And I love seeing that, uh, you know, all the ages, running through the ages. It's incredible. Uh, but at, at the time, it didn't have any effect on me. Now, I can see my son falling in love with Lara. He's, I've, I've just bought him the game for his birthday. And um, he, 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 you know, he, he lights up when he hears things on YouTube with my voice. Mommy, that's you, mommy, that's you, you're Lara. Oh, that's amazing. And that for me is like, I love it. Awesome, that's great. How about for you, Natalie? Um, a little bit like Shelley at the time, it didn't, she didn't really have any effect on me because we didn't really know that much about her, but mm. now as obviously time's gone on, mm. we know a lot more about her and, you know, she's this powerful woman that, you know, fights evil and helps, the, you know, save the vulnerable and the, the poor. And she's, um, I think she's just got it all as a woman. And, you know, that's quite inspiring, actually. Definitely. She has, she has it all. And what would you say each of, like, now that you do know more about her and you've seen the influence, what are each of your favorite aspects of her character? We'll start with you, Shelley. I think uh, about her character. I love her sassiness. I can't speak for the later games, obviously, and I, 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 I've only seen clips of mine. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I would say, yeah, uh, to be fair, I, I would say that um, 
it's her sassiness, it's her delivery. Um, I, yes, she's a loner, but she gets her stuff done. That doesn't seem to bother her. I need people around me, but she's, you know, she's a loner. And she's, I love that she's gutsy and, and strong. Uh, but what I also love is that it's, it's brought so many people together across the world, all ages, you know, they're mad about her and it's it's global and I love that. She's brought so many people together. And how about for you, Natalie? What's your, your sort of favorite aspect of her character? Probably her confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a very confident uh, person. She knows what she wants and she knows how to get it. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps I'd like to be a bit like that myself. <laughs> she's very <laughs> and aspirational. Like said, she, yeah, and yeah. like she said, she's, she's so sassy as well, which I love, I love mm -hmm. about her. So both of you have families with, with children. So what do your kids think? Do your kids think about you being Lara Croft? And not just Lara Croft, like the first on each of your sides. Now, though, Shelly, what, is, what do your, your, your family think about that? Um, yeah, I mean, as I said, my son is, is now discovering her. And uh, to see, to see the, the love, you know, developing and, and the, the look in his eyes when he can see in magazines and stuff, interviews with me, just, he, he can't believe it. My, um, my husband used to play Tomb Raider when he was younger, and uh, he's 10 years younger than me. And he only found out once we were engaged that I was the voice. No and, way. Uh, yeah. Wow. And funnily enough, he said to me the other night, he didn't know, it's not, it's not something that comes up in conversation, you know. And he, um, he said to me the other night that he used to play the game, but then he got bored of it because he couldn't, you know, get past her saying no all the time. And now he's <laughs> stuck forever with me saying no. Um, so that's, that's quite funny. But yeah. Uh, yeah, my son loves it. Yeah, and how about how about your kids, Natalie? Yeah, you know, my children are really proud, and um, they, you know, they they used to go to uh, to school and sort of say, my my mum was the first Lara Croft, and my eldest is now twenty one. So back then, she uh, they didn't quite know who she was, but I used to have a few pictures up on my wall of, of me as as Lara Croft, and I, I remember they were like, oh my goodness, wow, look, at, they they just couldn't believe it, and then obviously to see the guns, like I said, you know, especially children, they're quite fascinated by. A, you know, a beautiful looking woman with with guns it's like wow you know it's, it's all new to them but mm -hmm. um yeah my um my my boys especially are um are really proud of of, of their mummy being the first lara croft model that is yeah. so cool all right well uh, do you have any special messages you want to share with the fans who admire your guys work i know like they you know now you're not quite on social media as much shelly you interact with fans all the time so you probably get to talk to them very regularly they're, really, but what they're probably so so bored of me <laughs> but I, I, um, I, I would honestly I would just like to say as I do all the time when I meet them thank you for the support you know the love for Lara is incredible and, yeah. and the fact that they support the Laras you know whichever Lara whichever the Lara they love is is a wonderful thing that, that she continues this this franchise continues and her, her legacy continues and I'm very proud to be Lara, of course, I'm honoured to be the first Lara, um, first voice of Lara, and um, I'm, I'm just so grateful for the love and support. Thank you very much. Amazing. How about you, Natalie? Anything you'd want to say to the yeah. fans? Yeah, the same sort of thing, actually. Thank you so much for the fans and for believing in in her and, and the character. Mm. And, you know, just just for always being there, really, and mm. um, and for having so much interest. Uh, which it, it's wonderful and I just feel so grateful to have been given yeah. that job the very first time to portray the original Lara Croft, um, which is amazing. So yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Right now, what we're basically going to do to, to wrap up this interview is we're going to go through some of Lara Croft's favorite things. So Lara Croft has always had a pretty fleshed out like a bio and it's, it's changed quite a bit over the years but one of her original bios had pretty much everything from like her favorite food to films and all that so uh lara's original favorite films are deliverance and the wrath of god all right so shelly what are your favorite films i'm a big musical buff um and i'm an old schooler so i love all the west side stories singing in the rain okay. things like that those are my things. But modern-wise, I would say um, Django Unchained and The Notebook. Yeah. Okay. Oh, how, how about you, movie. Natalie? Um, one of my favourite films is Pretty Woman. Oh, and, um, oh and yes. I love, 
I love Goodfellas and also, like Shelley, I love The Notebook too. It's super great. Oh, okay, how about favorite food? So, uh, the, 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 the bio read, despite being a proficient cook from her days at finishing school, her usual food that she opts for is beans on toast when, it, when at home. So this is something that the first time I went to the UK, I was like, I have to try this beans on toast thing. What is this? And I had it and I was like, this is, it's definitely food. I mean, it's fine. It was fine. But I didn't quite understand the, the beans yes. on toast thing. Uh, any insight into that is appreciated. You need, <laughs> to put, like, any, you need to put some grated cheese on the top. So okay, did I not do it right? I've had that three days already this week. <laughs> okay, I maybe, I just, maybe I just had like super plain beans on toast and I didn't like do it correctly. I also microwave my tea, so I am probably just doing everything British wrong. I oh my gosh, you should be going to prison for that. <laughs> <laughs> when you next come to London, I'll do your beans on toast and a proper cup of tea. My friends in Ireland did buy me an electric kettle, and I do use it most of the time, but sometimes if I'm like really in a hurry, I use the, so I'm, I'd be terrible. Like, I'm no judge of You're a busy lady. doing that. Okay, so Shelly, what is your favorite food? Um, I love Chinese. Mm -hmm. I love steak with red wine and mushrooms, mm -hmm. um, and a burger. I mean... Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. How about you, Natalie? Yeah. Uh, it's got to be a traditional roast dinner. Ooh. Sunday roast, I think. I absolutely love that. All the trimmings, cauliflower, cheese, carrots, oh, yeah. sweet potato. Uh, there you go, the quintessential roast, British girl that roast, she is. Hey, yeah, I okay. love, I love a roast dinner. <laughs> I do love, I do love English breakfasts. It's the beans on toast was the one thing I think I might have done wrong, but like a a, 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 a traditional <laughs> English breakfast, those are great. Oh, yeah. So great. Okay, so Laura's favorite hobbies. Okay, so she says any challenging sports, anything that is extreme, so on. And but then she also admitted once to having a stitched a tapestry, which is very different. All right, so Shelly, what are your favorite hobbies? I love sewing. So okay. I, I feel her on the tapestry thing. I love sewing, get my machine out, make things, alter things. Um, I love dancing, I'm a dancer, trained dancer. So I, 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 you know, sometimes when the kids are in bed, I put my headphones in and I dance like no one's watching. That's one of my hobbies, that's also an escape. Um, rollerblading. Okay. And painting, I like to paint on canvas. Well, then you should be able to keep busy at home. You've got lots of different options. That's awesome. How about you, Natalie? Yeah. Um, tennis. I love tennis. Okay. I'm quite a sporty person. So tennis, badminton, um, and I also love shopping, which is a, a big part of my <laughs> Nothing like also... retail therapy. <laughs> yeah, I also enjoy shopping, but maybe I have a very specific taste in stuff that I overindulge in, as yeah. you can see. <laughs> All right, behind well, you. <laughs> I know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, I can't stop myself. All right, Lara's favorite heroes. So for her, uh, all the great ancient figures who know who respected themselves enough to design intricate tombs to be buried in. She says nobody goes to that trouble anymore. Okay, so uh, Shelly, how about for you? Do you have a, a hero, someone you really look up to? Well, you know, I, I, I love all the people like Marilyn Monroe and, you know, all the big old stars of, of back in the day. But um, for me, it's people that can help cure people, people that really put in the, the time and the effort to find cures for things or help people, help make people feel better or be better or live a better lifestyle. That's um, someone that can really put themselves out for others. They're my heroes. Amazing. I wish I could be more like that. All right. And how about for you, Natalie? Yeah, I feel exactly the same. I think especially at the moment, what we're all going through, the pandemic, I think, you know, hats off to our doctors, our nurses, the scientists, everyone that's helping, you know, keep us safe and without yeah. them, you know. Absolutely, 100% agree. agree. Mm -hmm. All right, on to Laura's favorite music. So she it says she was brought up with an appreciation for classical music, but um, also, let's see, also likes Nine Inch Nails and considers it good, easy listening and likes trance music for training. Very specific. Oh. I just love, I love like somebody wrote her bio and had this very specific, you know, stuff in mind. So Shelly, how about your favorite music? So musicals? So I'm gonna say trance is the least yeah. there. You know, I, I, <laughs> okay. I can't stand trance. Oh, but I've got eclectic taste. I've, I, you know, I love everything from AC, DC to Barry Manilow, you know, and all okay. the 80s and I, I, the 50s and 60s, everything, Motown, hip hop, funk, all right. whatever. I'm, I, I'm, I love it. You know, huge. How about for you, Natalie? Yeah, a uh, yeah, I'm quite similar to that. I love Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, Lionel Richie, yeah. Stevie Wonder, um, all those sort of singers. They're, you know, they are amazing, and they're they're who I I love to listen I just to. Feel most good of music. The time. Very listen, wise. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. All right, Laura's favorite transport was her Norton Street Fighter motorbike. So, do you have a favorite type of car or or transportation or anything along those lines, Shelley? 
Well, I, I love my Mini. I drive a silver Mini and Mini Cooper. And, but I love, um, you know, the old Mercedes, like the 1960s. Mm. I don't know what they're called. I know nothing about cars. But I love the old convertible Mercedes cars. Beautiful. Super beautiful. And, and for you, Natalie? Um, well, if I had the choice, um, someone said you'd have any car you want, I would probably have to say a Bentley Sport. <laughs> I do love that. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so one day, maybe. So Laura's, the next one's Laura's Lucky Charm, and it was any gun at hand for her. So Shelly, do you have a lucky charm? Something that, that you think brings you good luck? As Laura would say, I make my own luck. Oh. Oh, nice one. <laughs> it's almost like we set that up and we didn't. All right, how about, how about for you, Natalie? Anything that you, you keep around um, is a good luck sign? Well, I'm into crystals. So in my bedroom, um, well, scattered around my house, actually, I have lots of crystals um, to keep good energy, um, to, to keep me calm. And I, I'm a massive believer in them and heal. Um, so, yeah, the crystals. Uh, and I keep them in my purse as well. Um, I always carry them around with me. I love that. I just started looking into crystals and I've got my friends some crystals for like their goals for the for the new year and stuff like that. Yeah. So I love it. I love they're they're not just beautiful, they're inspirational. No, so they are. All right, Lara's ambitions. Her main ambitions lie in the undefined world of tombs of the past. Alright, that's kind of ambiguous. <laughs> what are your ambitions now, Shelly? You're you're so um, accomplished in your career. What what's something you still aim for? Honestly, just to continue my passions, my passions, you know, are being happy and healthy, having a happy, and healthy family, uh, most important. But, but I, I love my job so much. I'm so blessed to be able to do it every day. And I just want that to continue because that's my, that's where my creativity lies. And that's where, that's, that's, that's my happy place. My booth is my happy place. And I, as long as that continues and, and my kids are healthy and we're all healthy, I, that's, that's my ambition. That's it. Just, love you know, be happy. Love it. And Natalie, what are, what are your ambitions currently? Yeah, um, my ambition at the moment, I'm I want to set up a, an online interiors um, gift giftware shop online. Um, I would have liked to have, have tried to have bought a little gift shop, but I don't think that's the way things are going now. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start it small online. Um, but yeah, just be grateful and blessed that we're I like Shelley. You know, I have a, a healthy. Um, and, and a happy life and my children are healthy and all my loved ones are healthy and happy and health is wealth at the end of the day. So absolutely, yeah. that's the most important thing. 100%. Yeah. All right, Laura's fear is second to last one. Her aunt's corgi, which has bitten her on several occasions and she there's little she can do about it. So this is one of those funny bits of like trivia that Laura Croft is afraid of corgi, so specifically her aunt's corgi. All right, good to know. Do you guys have any unusual fears? Things that, that are kind of out of the ordinary or something that you are just like, no. Stay no, I, I'm, I'm terrified of the, the, the normal thing, spiders. Any any <laughs> kind of creepy crawly, I, I, I just can't, I can't cope. I can't deal. My sister's scared of bananas. Is that not a weird one? Wow. It's very specific. Never heard of that one before. <laughs> bananas. She can't touch it. She can't look at it. She's uh, uh, Do you need to speak spiders. Speak on this morning. Huh? <laughs> you see yeah. the speakers on this morning. They're yeah. those therapists that... You know, I've seen, yeah. I've, I've seen the um, the woman that was a, uh, scared of a fridge, her fridge. She couldn't go near her <laughs> fridge because she was scared of it. And oh, God knows wow. how she ate, but there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, I'm on such good terms with my fridge. It's no. <laughs> you, I think everyone is at the moment. <laughs> All right, for, for you, Natalie, anything, any, any unusual fears or anything like that? No, same. I'm, I'm terrified of spiders. A little bit of flying as well. Um, but I have to overcome that. Um, I, you know, I absolutely hate it. I, I, I feel like I can't breathe properly. I go clammy. Um, and it's definitely the takeoff. Um, yeah. I, I did have quite a scary experience a few years ago coming back from Ibiza. And um, I was sat right opposite the air stewardess. And she knew I, I had a fear of flying. And as we've gone up, there's always that horrible noise as, as you take off, that mm -hmm. real loud groaning noise. And I was like, it doesn't sound right. And she was like, no, that's just because we're reaching altitude and it makes that noise. With that, her phone rings, the phone, and she's got this panicked look on her oh, face. No. She went, pardon? What? Right. And I said to my husband, oh my goodness, this doesn't look oh. good. And he went, calm down, it's fine, it's fine. But I just knew, looking at her face, nothing mm -hmm. it wasn't fine. Right. And mm -hmm. um, an engine caught fire. So <gasps> we had to try and make an emergency landing. And I must admit, I thought that was it. I thought we were going to yeah. crash. And 
it was absolutely terrifying but obviously I'm here I'm, I'm telling the tale but the the next day on the next flight home the the pilot that landed that flight was sat behind us and he said he'd never experienced anything like that before. Wow. And uh, he said he he said there's so many buttons that you need to push and you have to think so quickly. He said I must admit he said oh, I was really scared, but he did an amazing job landing it. But yeah, it didn't help me with my my fear. <laughs> must have been. I will admit I also hate flying so much. Mm. However, there are years that I will fly. You know. 80,000 miles a year. I haven't flown in like a year and a half because we, oh, you know, no one has, yeah. you know, and so it's, it's super weird for me to be grounded this long, but actually, you know, because I do so much stuff for Tomb Raider and get to meet fans and like, I always put it in my mm. head, what would Lara do? It's like, all right, I'm scared. I can admit I'm scared, yeah. but I'm still going to get on the plane and I'm still oh. going to do this. And, but yeah, I'm not a fan of flying either, but people wouldn't usually know mm. because I just do it all the time. Yeah. Do it all the time. Just mm. what, what are, what is the opportunity on the other side of the flight is what I try to tell myself. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And then the last little bit about Laro's bio is that she loves to be alone and she feels most alive when exploring ancient spaces on her own. So what is an activity that makes you guys feel most alive and or are you a loner or you enjoy company or both? I'm very sociable. I, I love I love company. I really miss at the moment going going out with my girls, you know, for dinners. Yeah. We have girly dinners and catch ups. I really miss that. I feel alive when I'm dancing. I feel alive when I get a great gig to voice so that I get to do a character, you know, um, a different voice to, to, a, to a normal promo, for example. Um, swimming, I, I feel alive when I'm swimming. Um, awesome. Those are a lot of lot of great activities. How about you, Natalie? Yeah. Yeah, I especially at the moment, you know, I get my joy from having all my children around me and just laughing. Yeah. Laughing. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of laughter that goes on inside my house, which is which is lovely, and you know, having them all around me and with me. Um, is is when I'm the happiest. That's great. All right, so we have one more small. We'll keep these. We'll keep these quick. We'll we'll, we'll make them sort of like rapid fire questions. So they're exploring Tomb okay. Raider one. So basically, we're going to go through some of like the scenarios and would you rather type things in Tomb Raider okay. one that Laura has to deal with. So first question is Tomb Raider one introduced Croft Manor, which had amenities like a library, music room, gym, swimming pool. So if you could expand your home to have one of those, what would it be, Shelley? Uh, I think I'd like an ice skating rink. Ooh, that'd be amazing. I, I, I would. I would like an ice skating rink, um, and you know, you could you could pull back the ice, and then it's a it's a it's a, it's a pool. I love that. I guess it's multifunctional. Yeah. How about you, Natalie? I'll have one of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Two a for one. Pool would be nice. I love swimming, so yeah, get the kids in there. And, yeah. Laura had a really nice pool. I was super jealous. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Laura says, uh, famously says, I only play for sport. It's for sport at the onset of the game, implying that the thrill of discovery is what motivates her. So what do you guys say is the thing that motivates you most for your goals? So I think we kind of touched on some of this, Shelley, so like family. Yeah, uh, and all happiness, happiness, happiness and, and passion, you know, mm -hmm. uh, keeping my, my family happy, my, my, my family unit happy, and, and, and my passion for, for what I do in my career. All right, and Natalie, for you? That motivates me. Yeah, the same, the same sort of thing. Yeah, making mm -hmm. sure that my my children are happy and that everyone's healthy, and yeah, that, that that's about it. I think Shelly summed that up. And, and passing that on as well to them. I, I always try and pass on to you know say to my kids to follow your passions and to mm -hmm. you know it's, it, you're only as happy as your children are once you have children. You know, so to see them happy and thriving is 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 a wonderful thing. Yeah, I can imagine. Okay, a couple of would you rather. So there are a lot of ferocious foes in Peru to keep Laura from her goal. So would you rather go up against a pack of wolves or a single bear, Shelley? I'm going to say a single bear because at least I might have some sort of a chance rather than <laughs> yeah being attacked from all sides. I'm <laughs> also directional. Yeah. All right, how about yeah. you, Natalie? Team bear or team wolves? Um, yeah, I'd probably say a bear because, yeah. you know, I could just get my bow and arrow out or, or, or a gun. Yeah, job done. Pro tip, in the beginning nice. of the Tomb Raider game, you can just run and jump in this pool of water and then the bear won't get you. That's what I did all the time. I was so afraid of the bear that I would just run past the bear and jump in the water. And then I'd be like, you can't get me. Tell my heart, calm down. And then I would figure out how to get rid of it. Okay, so not all foes in Tomb Raider are large in scale. Would you rather be in a tomb filled with rats or bats? Shelly. They need need to bother me, so I'm cool. Okay. If you put a spider in there, I'm out. But but a right. or a bat, no problem. Not not till Tomb Raider two. Natalie, how about for you? Oh well, neither of those. I've got just like yeah, no, I'd I'd hate that. Eat a rat or a bat, but um, I'd probably take my chances with um, a bat more because they are. 
kind of cute in a way. They are. I describe yeah, them as flying rats, really like and then people are like, that's worse. Like, but yeah, they're just rats with, rats with wings. Yeah, yeah, they are. I think they're the best. Okay, so uh, would you rather uh, the showmanship of Lara moves are part of her major appeal early on? So would you rather be able to perform a perfect handstand or a flawless swan dive, Shelley? As long as there's water there, a swan dive. <laughs> As long as Very, okay, there. I'm quite clumsy. Um, All right. I don't think I, I, yeah, I don't think there's anything, you know, I could do a handstand against the wall, but I, I think it's one dive. Very swan elegant dive. and, yeah. Okay, yeah. Natalie? Me, yeah, me too. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? The to be able to do this one dive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Okay, so uh, in the Lost Valley, Lara discovers a Lost Valley in Peru where dinosaurs are still alive. So if you discovered a world where there were mythical or extinct creatures, that could be alive, what would they be? So we talk like unicorns or Sasquatch or dinosaurs. What would you what would you find in your lost valley? Shelly, we'll start with Megalodon. You. I'm a, I'm obsessed with sharks, so I would say Megalodon. All right. I would love to, yeah, go down and see one of those and yeah. With proper safety precautions. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a chicken at the end of the day. Yeah. I would yeah, I'd like to be in a cage, you know, very thick cage. Uh, and just just view them, yeah. Ooh, Pretty yeah. incredible. All right, Natalie, how about for you? What would you find in a lost yeah. valley? Mm, maybe a dinosaur. Yeah. I mean, to get yeah. close to, you know, maybe a Tyrannosaurus Rex or, you know, a, a dinosaur. I think would be pretty, pretty awesome. Cool. I, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so in the tomb of Qualipec, Lara discovers a piece of the ski on there. Um, if someone found your long lost tomb, what treasure would be buried there to represent you, Shelley? What would someone find? Like, would it be an iPod? Would it be a DVD, a specific movie? Like, what would they find to represent you? Hundreds of high heeled shoes. <laughs> All right. That's what, it. I'll, what be, are I'll these be covered, tools in, of torture? covered in shoes. <laughs> how, how about you, Natalie? What would people find in your tomb? Um, probably, uh, you know, a handbag of some description. <laughs> Chanel. I, I think that. Chanel handbag. <laughs> Just resting your head on the Chanel. Yeah. <laughs> right, so Atlantis. Uh, Lara discovers, uh, discovers her doppelganger in Atlantis and it copies her every move. Fans lovingly call her Bacon Lara, which is hilarious. So if you could have a copy of yourself, what would you have her do for you, Shelley? Like, do all your chores, all the stuff you don't like doing? Like, oh, what would, what would I, you do? I, 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 I've got two stories, so I would I would tell I would get her to go up, up and down, up and down, up and down, doing the washing, all the laundry. Okay. I hang it up upstairs. I run down again. I hang it. That's what she'd be doing. Amazing. And and you, Natalie? Yeah, probably putting my bins out because even though I've got three <laughs> sons and and uh, my husband, I seem to be the one that has to roll the bins out all the time and bring them back in and take the rubbish out <laughs> and change the toilet roll when it runs out. What? Because I think, yeah, you know, they just have empty toilet rolls hanging. No one <laughs> to put a new toilet roll on. It's always left to me. It's the small oh. things, out. small things that make yeah. a difference, though. All right, on a yeah. similar line, Lara had cheat codes for unlimited ammo and weapons in Tomb Raider 1. If you could have a cheat for unlimited something, what would it be? And let's not say money, because like that's an, a more mm -hmm. obvious one. So like, if you'd have unlimited anything, I feel like it's gonna be shoes for you, Shelly. But no. Say that again, if I had unlimited what? So there's cheat codes in the original Tomb Raider where you can get unlimited ammo or so on. So like, if you could have a cheat code for life that would give you unlimited something, what would it be? Okay, I, I, I would like, to get unlimited time to the one the ones I love, I would guess that Un I, I I've got a few at the moment. I would love to go back. I wish I I wish I'd spent more time with my grandparents asking them their stories and I, I would like the cheat code to be able to go back and just spend more time with them and, and ask them questions that I was too kind of you know silly and selfish to ask before. You know, too bad we don't have like level skips, skip around in levels like in the game. That would be very helpful. How about you, Natalie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, probably handbags. Yeah. <laughs> I do I love, love my handbags. One for every outfit, every day. Yeah. Uh, Laura also had a bottomless backpack. Like, I don't know how she fit everything she did in it, um, but it had her essentials, her passport, her medipack, and all of that, uh, all her weapons. So what are your travel essentials when you guys go somewhere? What is the thing that you absolutely have to have in your bag with you? Oh, today? first of all, earplugs. I have okay. to have earplugs for the flights, people snoring, you know, kids <laughs> screaming. First of, first off, they go in. That, that's, what, that, what, that's what goes in first. Okay, all right, and Natalie, for you, what can't you travel without? Well um, at the moment, hand sanitizer because I am yes. a bit of a freak when it comes to that. Um, and my crystal, I do yeah, like to take yeah. crystals with me. I mm. love that. That's great. Okay, another would you rather? Laura always seems prefer prepared, even if her outfits are a little off for the climate. So, would you rather have to survive in a snowy tundra or a scorching desert, Shelley? 
hot or cold? Snowy. I, snowy? I, I, I don't like the heat. I don't like the sun. I'm, I'm a real winter, autumn winter gal. So I snow all the way. Okay. Natalie, how about you? Snow or sand? Sun? Uh, sun, definitely. Okay. I, I don't like the cold. I hate the cold. I just oh. like, yeah. My my husband keeps saying we must take the kids skiing, but I'm like, no, it's okay. You, you <laughs> take the boys skiing, oh, just put me on a beach somewhere. Well, you could go uh, to the lodge next to the fireplace and like be a little snow bunny next to the fireplace. Nice. There's, there's nice things no, to do if yeah. you stay inside. Enjoy the snow view. All right. Well, yeah. And the last question, so looking back on Lara's first adventure, uh, where would you most like to go, if you haven't been already, out of the places she traveled? So Peru, Greece, Egypt, I'm not counting Atlantis since I don't think there are flights to Atlantis yet. So out of Peru, Greece, and Egypt, where would you like to go, Shelley? Or have you been to any of those places? I'd, I'd, say, I'd say Peru, because I've been to, been to the other two. I, okay. I would say Peru, just, just to see what it's like and yeah. you know have an adventure. Yeah. yeah. Machu Picchu someday. Natalie, how about for you? Well, I've never been to Egypt, so perhaps to go and see the pyramids. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. mind doing that one day. Incredible. Someday, hopefully, we'll all get to go back to traveling at some oh, point in time, yeah. and, and the world will open up again once it's safe. Yeah. But those were all the questions I had. You two have been amazing to talk to. Thank you so much. I think Thank fans you. are really going to enjoy this this little you know travel back in time and getting inside your guys' head with these Lara questions. So anything else you want to sign off and say to fans before, before we go, Shelley? Just thank you so much for the loyalty, for the support. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be, you know, part of the history. It's, it's mind blowing to me every day that, that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a small part of this fantastic, you know, icon and history. And I, I'm very, very grateful. Thank you so much, and thank you for this interview, Natalie. It's lovely to meet you. And you for the too. First time. So and, nice. Uh, I've heard so yeah. much about you. Been yeah, lovely. me too, from Ash. Yeah. Any, oh, any yeah. final thoughts, Natalie? Anything you want to share before we sign off? Yeah, pretty much like Shelley, just to say thank you so much to all the fans for being so loyal and uh, and for always being there and for being so supportive and, um, and yeah, you're amazing. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much. We will talk to you soon. Thank you, yeah, Megan. Thank you. Yeah.